Okay, you are mute. I'm mute. No, sir, Raji Wok is mute. Okay. Ah, hello, viewers. So today we have uh, been arranging two lectures. Uh, one is from Dr. Suresh Ram regarding the importance of weather services in air traffic sectors. And another one is use of radar technology in weather services by Dr. B. A. M. Kannan, sir. So I will inter uh, uh, request Sri uh, Savai Sajya, sir, to kindly give a brief write-up about Dr. Suresh Ram. Uh, whose lecture has been organized now. So, Savai Sajay, sir, please carry on. Uh, thank you, Rajiv. I am very honored and happy to introduce Dr. Suresh Ram, uh, our senior faculty. Uh, Dr. Suresh Ram joined IMD in the year 1989 after completion of MSc in Mathematics in year 1987 from University of Allahabad. He is presently posted in Ministry of Earth Science as a program director and dealing with various activities of IMD. He is an operational forecaster and has served as an aviation forecaster in IMD at different airports. He has issued the aviation forecast and warning for safe operation. He is a faculty of aviation metrology, uh, uh, aviation metrology uh, at Metrological Training Institute, IMD. He has also participated in 20th Indian Antarctic Expedition as winter team member during 1999-2001. And he has published seven research papers on different weather phenomena for use of guidelines for operational forecasters. I now request Dr. Suresh Ram to start his lecture and to viewers and audience to feel free to ask, uh, to explore this opportunity and ask him questions in the chat box as well. Okay. Okay, thank you. Suresh Ram, sir. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Vaisalji. So, today, importance. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, today, my, we, 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 I will talk on the importance of the weather service in air traffic sector. sector. Air traffic sector means aviation sector. sector. So, how much important of the weather for aviation industry? Is it great importance towards the economy, towards the efficiency, and towards the safety of the passengers of the aircraft? That is why the briefing of weather is mandatory. Briefing is done at the airport metrological offices at the airport, located at the airport, along with the uh, briefing of the ATC. In, 19, in India, in 1921, first aviation forecast was issued from Simla for Royal Air Force flight operations to Wajiristan. Now it is in Pakistan. The year in 1929 to be, to be known as the exact year of weather service set up, set up in India to serve the earliest commercial flight, notably the air mail service between India and England. In 1941, aviation visited the phenomenal growth and as a result, meteorological organizations also expanded. In 1952, IMD built up the capacity for providing the new type of the service for the, for the jet flight and then important milestone in the history of the aviation made services are Installation of metrological airport medical instrument. IMD is the medical metrological authority for providing the aviation med services, and hence IMD is the 
service provider for aviation made service. DGCA is the national regulator which is responsible in all matter related to the aviation service, either related to the airlines or the related to the airport operators or related to the aviation made service. All the services they are the DGCA is the national regulators. Whereas the ICAO, ICAO is the international agency responsible for all matters related to the air navigations. It is a body of the WMO. So DGCA is responsible for implementing the international regulation in the country. Indian air, air space are divided into four meteorological, four FIR. The FIR is the flight information region. The, these FIRs, along these FIRs, the, there are the MWOs and AMOs and aeronautical metro stations. The many airports are located in the each FIRs, different type of the air, airports, national, international, uh, even flying clubs. These are the educated in the each FI, FIRs. And along the A, each FIR, there the uh, meteorological watch offices is there. IMD caters the need of the aviation meteorological service through the meteorological watch offices, MWOs. There are four MWOs along the four FIRs, and there are the aerodrome meteorological offices. There are 17 meteorological offices and aeronautical metro stations. There are 75 meteorological stations. These are located at the small airports, whether it is a national in or it is a international, yeah, it is a part-time airports. These are called under the aeronautical metro stations. No AMOs, the AMOs are located at the full fledged airport, whether it is the national or international. MWOs are located at the four MWOs along with the four FIR. Four FIR is the Delhi, Chennai, Kolkata, and Mumbai, these are the four FIRs along with the four FIR, four MWOs, MWO Calcutta, MWO Delhi, MWO Bombay and MWO Chennai are located. Apart from this, ICAO Tropical Cyclone Advisory Center is also functioning at New Delhi. So the responsibility of the TCSE Advisory, TCSE Center is to issue the advisory for the India as well as for the neighboring country when there is a formation of tropical cyclone. Each MWOs are associated with the each FIRs. So, so the responsibility of MWOs lies with, with the FIRs. Total 94, 92 MIT offices at 92 airports are located. The stakeholders and user agency, DGCA, Director General of Civil Aviation, of the Ministry of Civil Aviation, Airport Authority of India, airport operators, airport of different type of airport, of the JVC airport, joint ventures, Delhi, Mumbai, and Nagpur, there are the joint ventures, where is the Greenfield airports, these are private Greenfield airports, private airports, and government airports, national and international airline operators. Defense services, defense services, the Indian Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, these are the stakeholders, offshore operations, ONGC, charter flights and aerial survey, including the helicopter operations, helicopter service, search and rescue operations, and disaster management, sports and recreation gliders. Sports and recreations, gliders, hot air balloons, etc. Are these are the stakeholders. Now, type of the airports. The air, there are airports under the different air type of the airports. Some airports are under the airport authority of India. These are the airports are national airports. There are international airports, and some airports are under. Uh, Licensed under the Greenfield policy in 2008, government has introduced the Greenfield policy with the help of the private 
PPP mode. It is this these airports are operating. Operations of the air strip under RCS regional connectivity scheme. Actually, in 2017, government has launched the regional connectivity scheme for Uran. Uran means nothing but it is a Ure Desh ka Aam Nagari for general people. So it is a subsidized. And in 2000, many air strip has been officialized. Private airports, including the JVC airports, private airports, Kamshetpur airport is totally private airport. The Kochi airport, totally private airport. So JVC airport, as I told, JVC airport is also a private airport, but there is a uh, share, uh, the, the joint ventures like Delhi. Mumbai and Nagpur, they are the first, they are the first uh, joint ventures. Then airport under governments. You see, air, there are many airports are under the governments. Airport, not airport, but flying clubs. The airport government is also operating. Heliports. Heliports. In Delhi, there is a one heliport, is a Rohini. Even Juhu is also a heliport. Those so small aircraft is also landing. But uh, heliports uh, in Northeast, many airports are in operations. Airports under the defense, uh, defense. Just see, uh, the airport at Dabolin, Goa, is operating is up the, under the Navy. Where is the airport at uh, Port Blair is under the Navy, uh, this is Coast Guard. Under Navy, the Vizag Airport is under Navy, Bagdogra is under Navy. So these airports are even Pune airport is under the IF. These airports are Agra airport are under the IF, but these airports are used as a civil defense airport. So these are the, the airport from where the civil defense is uh, operating under civil defense. The services for meteorological service is services for meteorology is provided by the respective agency. For the Bagdogra, the, for the Pune, as well as for the Agra, the Air Force is providing. Even for Srinagar, the Air Force, Air Force is providing. But for the uh, Dabolin Airport at uh, Goa, the Navy is providing. Port Blair Coast Guard is providing the aviation med services. Observations. What are the what comes under the aviation med services? The, comes under the observations, forecasts, warnings issued by the IMD for providing the aviation med services. Observations, the current weather observations and report. Terminal terminal aerodrome forecast. In short term, it is called the TAP. Forecast for landing and takeoff. Forecast for cruising levels. Various warning, including the SIGMET, fog monitoring and forecasting service. Any special service, observations, and forecast on request, and then briefing. Briefing is the main part for last, main and last part for the aircraft prior to aircraft taking the take off. So pilot has to come in the MET briefing room, have to take the briefing. Nowadays it is the online, but earlier what it is, how what it has been done, the earlier the MET people has to prepare the forecast folders, which includes the route forecast, current weather observations, terminal aerodrome forecast, forecast for landing, train forecast and takeoff forecast. Warnings, if warning is there, and that pilot, the, the pilot is prior to visit to the ATC briefing, ATC briefing and communication briefing. They used prior to the visiting to the ATC, they used to come to met for met briefing. They first come to the met briefing, then they used to go to the for communication and ATC briefing. So these these briefing rooms are located at side by side with the ATC complex. Different phase of the flight. Just see, I turn away prior to the just turn away at runway. There's a takeoff phase, then climb out area, then cruising. 
level. Then descend, yeah, you can say approach paths, then landing. From one airport to another airport, these are the different phases. First phase is the takeoff phase, then climb out, then cruising, then descend or approach, then landing. So for each phase, the forecast of the warnings are issued. For each phase, phases of the flight and weather impact, terminal, that is the runway, freezing or frozen precipitations, and any thunderstorms and associated weather having impact on operations, wind, wind shear, low ceiling and or visibility, low ceiling clouds, hai, that is, and, and or visibility may impact the in terminal runway operations. Departures, this is at the time of takeoff, wind, wind shear, microburst, turbulence, icing, and thunderstorm and associated weather having impact on departure operations. In the in route, jet stream, wind, mountain waves, turbulence, icing, thunderstorms, and associated weather. In associated weather, the thunderstorm and associated weather that includes the whenever the, it is uh, said that the thunderstorm is possible, it means the all weather associated with the thunderstorm. The weather is hailstorm, squall, dustiness, rain, heavy rain, all weather associated with the thunderstorm may occur. In approach, that is the descending phase, the wind, wind shear, microburst, turbulence, icing, thunderstorm, and associated weather having the impact on arrival and approach operations. Ceiling and ceiling means ceiling cloud. Ceiling and visibility determine the type of the approach versus instrumental. Visual or instrumental. Just see, visual or instrumental. There are many airports who works on the visual flight rule, VFR. And there are many airports who works on the IFR, instrumental flight rules. They follow the instrumental flight rules. And many airports are flight following the visual flight rules. So these visual flight rules, they follow the uh, VFR, the, they fly the meteorologicals, visual meteorological rules. Okay. The, uh, and guide the visual meteorological rules, whereas the IFR is the instrumental rules. That instrumental means the automatic instrument should be installed, the ILS should be installed install there at the runway. The IOC, instrumental landing system should be there. Then terminal runway, that is the approach at the runway. This freezing or frozen precipitations and any thunderstorm associated with the uh, associated having the impact operations, wind, wind shear, low ceilings, and are visibility and may impact the terminal runway operations. Pre flight actually, services prior to takeoff, prior to flight. Planning. They, they want the data, they want the forecast, you know, what will be the weather, what will be the weather of the uh, that stations, that airport, not only airport, the, the airport from which take off the airport at which they will land, intended to land. So pre, for pre-flight planning, they want the data, that they want the forecast, that they call the takeoff forecast, at that time there is a terminal aerodrome forecast for the destinations for the orientating stations and as well as the destinations and alternates. Each aerodrome of departure as well as the arrival have their alternates. In between, they ask, also ask the uh, TAF for the in-between stations, in-between airports. Forecast of significant weather, in-route weather, if any. Forecasts of wind and temperature, in in route wind and temperatures 
and their levels. As per levels, they the predefined the predefined levels are allotted there. Yes, they will do this aircraft will do at these levels. So for that levels, they want the temperature and winds and any significant weather in the room. So that comes in the pre-flight pre planning according to that weather that they fly, they, they, they plan their flights. Then take off. For take off, the wet report, that is the current weather observation report in the form of wet report. Then take off, then aerodrome warning if there is aerodrome warning for the take off. Uh, they also want the in wet report, actually in take off there is a trained Train forecast is also there given. Climb out, that is as low level wind shear informations. If there is a wind, low level wind shear information is available, you have to provide little wind shear. The significance, significant weather in the climb area. Low level wind shear informations and radar and satellite informations, if there is any. any. Then cruise level forecast for forecast for the wind temperature, wind and temperatures at various levels, at various flight levels, significant weather information, sigmet information, sigmet information is nothing but is aerodrome, this is a, a type of the warning having the highest priority in the aviation met messages. If the sigmet is issued, it has to be passed on the highest priority and has to be uh, communicated to the pilot. This destination is pilot, pilot in the flight. Satellite information, if you have, then approach are determining the tuffers of the uh, intended landing the destinations and their alternates. Then landing forecast, this is the landing forecast of the that airport that is in the form of train forecast. Low level wind shear information, weather, radar, and satellite information at the landings, the MET report or the current weather observation report, and the aerodrome warning if there is aerodrome warnings. This is a A1 survey. This is a report of one survey, the accident survey of. 1,842 aircraft accident from 1950 to 2006. It was found that due to weather, 11% accidents occurs. And out of 11%, mostly occurs at this phase, at the phase of landing phase, approach and landing phase. This is the descending and landing phase. More, this is the most vulnerable area. Uh, phase of the flight which the aircraft effect accident may occur due to the weather, increment of the weather. The other human error is 8% due to sabotage, 6% sabotage due to the uh, some uh, bombing or uh, shootings, shooting of the aircraft due to terrorist activities, other cause, unknown cause, 1%, pilot errors, pilot the accidents due to the pilot error is 53% highest, mechanical error, mechanical failure is 21%. So, third, uh, uh, weather is the third cause for the aircraft accident. And uh, uh, this is the, uh, this is especially at the approach to the air, airport, airport approach phase. Turbulence, some aviation hazards, the hazards are the turbulence, are clear air turbulence. Turbulence in other words is the air flow of air in which air is not laminar. Okay, so it is felt as the turbulent, turbulent, the air is turbulent in the form of the turbulence as well as the wind shear. Then come the wind shears and wind shears also, in the, in the wind shears, the flow of the air is 
either in terms of the speed, wind speed and directions, there are changes. Aircraft icing. Aircraft icing is also um, one of the uh, aviation hazards that uh, aircraft generally encounters. What happened in the cruise, especially in the cruise uh, cruising level? The uh, ice accumulation is increases. If the aircraft is not equipped with the de-icing facility, has, having no uh, de-icing facility, in that case, what happens? The weight of the aircraft increases, and the or how actually the aerodynamics changes. The performance of the engine increases. Fuel is fuel. The uh, fuels consumption increases. So many things happens in the air. That is very dangerous. Then fog and visibility. Fog is the worst phenomena which is affecting during winter time, and it is the, due to fog. The visibility becomes very very poor, poor, and that is why the very the categorized very few aircraft is operating when visibility is very very low that is the in the dense fog when visibility is up to 500 550 meters or 800 less than 1000 meter the fog is categorized when the visibility is less than 1000 meters thunderstorm and associated weather thunder if thunderstorm is forecasted, it is presumed that all weather associated with the thunderstorm may occur. What are the all weathers? That is the downdraft. That is a strong wind coming from the CB cloud. This is downdraft. Then the squall. Then the precipitations that increase. Then dust storm may in the in the pre monsoon dust storm dust, dust storm is there there will be, there will be the uh, reduction in the visibility torrential rain rain that visibility will be down so it, if it is lightning thunderstorm it is the lightning lightning is also is the emission hazards due to the thunderstorms responsibility of different meteorological offices and aerodromes. Met offices, meteorological watch offices. Can this actually what is the responsibility? The responsibilities of the MWOs continuous to maintain continuous watch and monitor weather over the flight information region, the region along which the <coughs> as we know there are four FIRs, Delhi FIRs. So if the responsibility of the MWO Delhi is to monitor the continuous monitor the Watch, monitor and watch, continuous watch and monitor the weather over the Delhi FIRs. Issue the segment if there is a significant significant change or there is a chances of uh, CB cloud or there is a chances of any uh, hazardous weather such as the uh, CB, icing, turbulence, if they uh, uh, Assess they, they issue the forecast, they observe, they have to issue the segment for that phenomena. Exchange of the segment, if the segment is issued, it, it should be exchanged with the neighboring FIRs as well as the FIR with the neighboring countries. Transmit the segment to the RODB, Regional Opmed Data Bank, World Area Forecasting Centers, National Channels, Jesse, Artival. Uh, the observations, deviations, uh, meteorological services are provided. It is provided under the uh, guideline issued by the ICAO. The guideline is issued, issued by the ICAO as well as the guideline issued by national practices, which is uh, monitored by the DGCA. And the uh, ICAO guidelines, that's had, uh, as per the ICAO guidelines, segment has to be transmitted to the RODB regional open data bank and World area forecasting centers and national channels, so that the air, this uh, any aircraft coming passing through this space may aware of the phenomena, weather phenomena. The second one is the AMO, Aerodrome Meteorological Office. These are the forecasting offices. The 
these are the forecasting officers this has to issue the forecast this has to maintain the continuous watch and monitor the weather over the aerodrome not only aerodrome it is monitor the up to aerodrome with the associated aerodrome also take current weather observations prepare and issue the routine reports that is the current weather reports in, in the form of met report and metar met report this is a report which is issued in the abbreviated plain language this is for the local use whereas the metar is the totally coded form it is this is a current weather report it is the totally coded form it is the, uh, in the uh, this uh, template this is standard template is provided by the icao even the met report is also provided by the icao the but the it is in the plain language plain language um, abbreviated plain language whereas the metar is the complete coded form issue of all aviation forecasts and warnings the amo has to issue the aviation forecast all aviation forecast and warnings for their own airport as well as for their associated ams so a the responsibility of the aeronautical met stations lie on the amo each amo has their responsibility the difference for uh, jaipur the responsibility of the airports under jaipur that is the udaipur airports ajmer airports kota the responsibility of these forecasting of aviation forecast is lying with the jaipur whereas the uh, responsibility of the forecasts of the kochi kannu and uh, kochi kot is lying with the trivandrum airport amo amo trivandrum the amo trivandrum is lying with the airport trivandrum airport so each amo has their responsibility of issuance of the own aviation forecast as well as for the associated ams not only forecast as well as for their warnings amo has the greater responsibility than ams they have to monitor the continuous monitoring the uh, continuous watch as well as monitor the weather over their own airport as well as for the associated ams then the third type of stations are there the aeronautical met stations these are the small airports the, the, uh, mostly amos are located uh, mostly at the international airport where mws are the four mws four mws are the four M, uh, located at the four metro that is the delhi calcutta and chennai and then mumbai so delhi mumbai Calcutta and Chennai. These are the four MWOs where the AMOs as well as the MWOs are located. They all are the mostly all are the international airport. AMO one or two AMOs are not international airport. So, aeronautical met stations. The different type of aeronautical met stations are there. There are the 24 hours met aeronautical met stations like Amritsar. Banaras, 24 hours, whereas limited period, Madurai is the limited period, then international airport, and national airport, that is the Ranchi, is the national, air, national airport, but this for the limited period, not 24 hours. So, the mixed type, the, the AMS systems are located at the airports. Which are not operated 24 hours, which are the national airport as well as for international airport. The responsibility of the metro rail station is continuous watch and monitor weather over the aerodromes. Take current weather observations, prepare and issue the routine reports. That is the MET reports and METARs. So the this mostly responsibility lie on the aerodrome meteorological office. The aerodrome meteorological office has to brief the briefing, provide the briefing and documentation in consultation to the pilot and users. AMO has to provide. What to provide briefings? What are the weather? 
suppose any flight is going from delhi to calcutta what will be the weather at calcutta what will the in route weather what will be the temperature what will be the wind at what level is there any significant weather so they have to provide what is what is going on at calcutta whether is there is a warnings whether there is a train forecast so everything in the briefing they have to provide they have to brief the about the, with the help of the nwp product with the help of satellite product with the help of wfc uh, with the help of the radars so what whatever the observations current weather observations so whatever they have to brief as well as they have to provide a folder in documentations consultation to the pilots if any pilots ask any questions any uh, even they ask for the intermediate stations for delhi to calcutta they want to uh, weather at gaya they have to provide nowadays the briefing is done by the olvs earlier we used to provide this briefing manually pilot used to come collect and discuss what is going to be happened nowadays this is uh, it is this briefing is done by the online briefings so that is called the self briefing government has uh, approved the self briefing through the online and now they are not coming to the metrological briefing room at the airports current weather observations and reports observations of the met conditions are met by the means of the instruments and visual estimation on half hourly basis just see the reports are issued half hourly every half hourly these reports are issued based on the instrument instrument or state of art technology instrument are located at the runway runway at the touchdown stop point and the mid are the three points of the runway they are located state of art so some is the visual estimation estimations this is the visual estimation is the sky of the conditions these are the based on the visual estimations okay whereas the wind temperature wind direction wind speed temperatures pressure all these are the visuals these are the based on the instrument instrumentals observations observational data are reported as a form of the met report and metar met report met reports for the local use it is in the abbreviated plain language whereas the metar it is in the purely coded form it is for the beyond the airport as well and some air uh, designated airport the metar of the designated airport are transmitted the beyond the country okay it is the international circuit it is supplemented by the special observations and additional reports when this credit criteria falls for specials the special reports are even additional reports are issued used by these these observation these reports are used by the local atc services ats now it is atm atm means it is communications navigations and surveillance all these are atc services are combined and for dissemination beyond the aerodrome of origin for dissemination beyond the aerodrome margins even within the country as well as by the abroad today's there is the met report for calcutta vcc just see this is a met report station is vcc vcc is the ecow location indicator issued at the 3 utc date is 2907 2022 wind is 205 kt 200 in the directions visibility is 4000 meter weather is hedge it is observations cloud few few 1800 feet second cloud is reported this scatter is 10000 feet there is no third and fourth there is a provision to report four uh, four cloud in general it is three clouds when there is a chance of this uh, cb as there is cb is observed the fourth cloud is to be reported otherwise the three cloud is to be reported one to two octa is taken if the sky is covered by one to two octa cloud 
that is imported in the term form in the form of few three to four it is imported in the form of scattered the temperature is 31 degree in the morning 3 gmt and dew point was the 28 degree qnh this is the pressure related to the mean sea levels this is the 1007 and qfe is 1006 this is the height in height of the qnh in inches 29.75 and uh, height of the qfe is 29.73 the same same time simultaneously this is for the local this met report is for the local use whereas the meta simultaneously the station has to prepare both the report one for the local use and another for the beyond for transmitting beyond the aerodromes in the same at the meta vcc same calculator vcc the tower location indicator this is 290300 zebra 200.05 kt, this is the 200 directions, 4000 visibility, the haze, whether it's haze, fuel 018, this is the quoted flight level, this is the form of the flight level, flight level multiplied by 100, it will, it will give the height in feet, this scattered 100, this scattered 10,000 feet, is, this is the quoted form, this flight level is given, this scattered 100, then temperature 31, public 28, dew point, is 28 temperature is 31 then qnh the qfe is not given as per the standard template the qfe has not to be included in the meta then trend there is no change in the weather for next two hours no signals there is no significant change in the weather for next two hours this this meta will be again issued after half an hour and that is at 3 30. okay so this uh, the train this is called also train forecast the train forecast will also update it after half an hour and that train forecast will be valid for next two hours here is train is also given in the met report this is the no signal there is no significant change in the weather okay so it is valid for next two hours but it is every half an hour it is updated based on the observations. Aviation forecast and warnings, terminal aerodrome forecast. Terminal aerodrome forecast is sued by the AMO, airport met, aerodrome met offices for their own airport and for their associated AMSs. There are two types of the airport, type, one for the national and another for the international. In the validity of the national airport that is domestic TAF, the variety of the domestic TAF that is the national TAF is 9 hours, whereas the variety of the international TAF is for 30 hours. The domestic TAF that is the national TAF is issued every 3 hours, whereas the international TAF that is 30 hours TAF is issued every 6 hours. The TAF are issued, all aviation for aviation forecasts and warnings are issued by the AMO. And the responsibility for issuance of the forecast and warning for their own airport and own aerodrome as well as for their associated aerodromes. Associated aerodrome aeronautical metric stations, landing forecast, public train forecast. This is issued by the each airport, each airport met officers at the AMS, either AMS or AMO. They have to issue the this forecast. Actually, this is appended as shown. This this forecast, the train forecast is also this is called the landing forecast. Train forecast, this is landing forecast. If there is a change, if there is, a, the, there is some, some activities, they can append here. The visibility is going to reduce from 400 to 1500 yeah, 3000 yeah, 2500 meter in rain or TSRA or heavy TSRA. Takeoff forecast. Takeoff forecasts are issued by AMO for their own airport, not for the AMSS, aeronautical metric stations. 
uh, in which in this takeoff forecast, wind, temperatures, and QNH are issued for every half an hour, for every hours, not half an hour, and issued it is for six hours, and every three hours, it is issued after every three hours, in which the two three hours are overlapping. It is issued under totally the, there is no cow template. Okay. Whereas the for terminal aerodrome forecast, the train forecast, there is a standard template, there is standard guidelines issued by the ICAO. But takeoff forecast, this is the national guidelines issued. But there is a provision to issue the uh, takeoff forecast in the ICAO guidelines. So the country they have to make their own template and say standard template and has to inform the cow that is the I am issuing this for takeoff forecast in this template. Then area forecast of the local forecast. They see in aerodrome, aerodrome metrological office, they are issuing the local forecast for their own airport. And the same for local forecast issued for the associated AMS is called the area forecast. That is why this is the template for these forecasts are same, whether are the local forecast or the area forecast. It is issued for 24 hours operations. It is three times. It is issued at uh, 6 to 14, 14 to 22, and 22 to 6. It's a uh, half an hour of the validity. Validity starts at 6. It is. It will be issued at 5.30. Okay, so eight hours, this validity is eight hours. Route forecast. Route forecast, this for these forecasts are the flight, they are the route followed by the aircraft. This forecast is for the route followed by the aircraft. It includes the significant weather, wind and temperature. Nowadays, it is given in the chart form, chart form in the, provided by the WFC. In the actually, I have issued the guidelines that the all route forecasts, except the local uh, local flyings, or except the flying flight below the 100 flight level, is to be given in the chart form. That is the in WFC frame. So, WFC, what area forecasting set actually? WFC is the uh, what is a forecasting center? They provide the grid wise wind and temperatures for all over the world. So we'll discuss later on the route forecast. So, and the local forecast, local forecast, this is nothing but this is the area of the local forecast. This is also these local forecasts are issued from surface to 100 millibar, 100 SPA, that is 530. Flight level, any 53,000 feet. So, wind and temperature up to this level are available, uh, included in this forecast, even if there is a warnings. So, it is a complete package. This is the local forecast, is nothing but it is a complete package for local flying. Flying is up to the, actually, this area is the area for the local forecast is up to 100 nautical miles around the aerodrome. So, any aircraft or any small aircraft or helicopters operating within 100 nautical mile around the aerodrome is provided the local forecast of that airport as a route forecast. Then aerodrome warnings. Aerodrome warnings are issued or warning for the light aircraft are issued for the uh, aerodromes, especially the aerodrome facility, aerodrome operations that are affecting when there is certain uh, weather, that is the thunderstorms, uh, visibilities, thunderstorms, they are wind storms, are increasing the uh, squall or heating of the air, aerodromes, they have to issue the aerodrome warnings for taking the care of the air, airport activities. Sigmet, Sigmet is the, it comes in the Sigmet information, but this is Sigmet is the nothing information. This is the Sigmet is the Warnings. These are warnings of the highest priority among the aviation met messages. It's all about this, whatever is the message. 
this is the highest priority assigned by the ICAO. And it is issued by the MWOs. And they issue for their respective uh, FIRs. If there are any activities, there is the activity they observe or there is they forecast, they seem to be there is a uh, turbulence, there is a uh, CV, they will issue the SIGMET for that activities in their FIR flight information regions. Warnings for wind shear. If there is a wind shear, you observe, you just issue a for if you observe, if you observe the wind shear or you get information through a pilot that the wind shear is in approach or the wind shear is a uh, takeoff, time out area. So you have to issue, include in the report, current weather report, that is the uh, METAR and MET report for next two hours. If the, any, any pilot again reported, then you have to again report again. Otherwise, for next two hours, after two hours, it will automatically, uh, it will automatically stop. You have not to report the, as per the ICAO guidelines. Aviation forecast and warnings, TAF, the type of the forecast area, yeah, airspace covered, then stage of the flight, responsibility of issuance, the forecast, the type, this is for the aerodromes. Just see, type, what will the area, the aerodrome and maximum aerial uh, area coverage is 25 nautical miles. This is used, the stage of the flight, this is like the pre flying pre-flight and in-flight. Landing forecast, that is train forecast, with at aerodromes. In-flight, issued by the responsibility of issuance of the, the AMO, of the AMSS, both are issuing. Train forecast, not full, full or not all AMSS, the few AMSS, the international air, Actually, there is a guideline for issuance of the air. train forecast for the international airport. So whether it is the aerodrome AMO or AMSS, they have to issue the, the train forecast or the landing forecast. Takeoff forecast, runway complex. This is pre-flight. This is the stage of the flight for the pre-flight. This is issued by the AMO. Forecast for in-route conditions. That is route or area of the area applicable flight levels for the applicable flight levels. Generally, what happens, civil, these civil flights are going, they are providing the three levels. Suppose any aircraft is going uh, 320 or 340, the one level below and one level above, you have to provide the wind and temperature, wind temperature chart for the in route flight and associated sea weather charts in the framework of the WFC and AMO, if low level, there is low level for the, you have to give the, if aircraft is operating below 100, they have to, you have to provide the low level chart. Otherwise, in the framework of the WFC, World Area Forecasting Chart Systems, you have to provide the charts. Then, SIGMET informations, this is for SIGMET is suit for the complete FIR or the control area, applicable to all flight levels. This is for the pre-flight and in-flight plannings. This is issued by the MW. Local public area forecast this is issued by the aerodromes and up to the 100 nautical miles and up to the flight level 530, 100 millibar. Local flying it is within a 100 nautical mile around. It is issued by the AMO. Then AirMet, AirMet met informations this is for FIRs are control area applicable to all flight flight levels up to the 100 flight level. This is pre-flight and in-flight issued by the MWOs. Aerodrome warnings, aerodrome warning for surface conditions at the aerodromes. This is for the parked aircraft and aerodrome installations. Aerodrome installations that the aerodrome activities are there. Then this is issued by the AMO as well as our own airport and their associated AMOs, AMSS, the wind shear, aerodrome, 
Then WS is the wind shear at the aerodrome and approach of the takeoff path between the runway to 500 meter. From runway level to level two up to the 500 meter. This is the wind shear have to actually uh, take off, climb out on the approach. The wind shear has to be issued. This possibility is, is the stress of the AMOs in the in flight. For a approach, yes. Yes. Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. VA, a volcanic ash activities. This is area affected by the volcanic ash cloud. If there is a volcanic activities over the regions. The bulletin has to be issued by the Volcanic As Advisory Center. Apart from the AMO, MWO, AMS, there are the VAAC, Volcanic As Advisory Center, TCAC, Tropical Cyclone Advisory Centers. When the area is affected by the volcanic ash clouds, they have to issue the Volcanic As Advisory. Yay! For the affected area for pre flight planning and in flight. Similar to the TCA. This is the area affected by the tropical cyclones. This is the tropical cyclone. This is the pre flight and in flight planning. This is issued by the TCSE. Nowadays, the new uh, space weather advisory area affected by the space weather information. <coughs> then, the pre flight and in flight. This is the space weather centers in India. They are not issuing the space weather advisory. There is no centers. Uh, even the responsibility of the India is not assigned to any. Uh, centers. Yeah, whatever I, I was talking about the WFC chart. Uh, actually, there are two centers, the World Area Forecasting Centers. There one is the at uh, uh, London and one is at Washington. These two centers are the mirror of each other. So, uh, but uh, India is getting the charts from the London. So. This is the current chart issued at the 18 UTC on 20th July 2022, based on the 12 Jebra observations, valid up to 18th UTC 29 July 22. It is the flight levels 050800 SPN. What is given? Just see, grid wise, the temperatures and winds are given. Grid wise. So, any flight coming from, just see, uh, coming from the Guwahati. Any flight from Guwahati to Delhi, they will they will face the headwinds, the westerly as the headwinds. Whereas the flight from Jaipur to Calcutta, they will face the uh, westerly as the tailwinds. And temperatures, the average are there also. So in issuance, of whenever we issue the forecast, uh, when you issue the uh, uh, manual, when when we we are issuing the manuals, we take the average wind and average temperatures for uh, Jaipur to Calcutta are from Guwahati to Delhi. These forecasts are issued, just see, 18 UTC, this is issued at 18 UTC based on the 12 Jebra observer. Actually, WFC chart are issued uh, at 00 UTC, 6 UTC, 12, 18, and then the, every six hours, the, these six hours, the 00, 12, 00, 06, 12, 18, these are the main synoptic observations. So, what are the observations are available? They are compiled by the WFC, they are computerized, they are fit in the computer. This is the uh, uh, NWP product. It is the product in the NWP product. No, the analysis has been done, the product has been given. And after six hours, actually, it is. Based on the 00, 12 UTC, 18 UTC is it is available. So after six hours, this uh, forecast is available throughout the world. Uploaded in the site. Similarly, significant weather charts. Just see, the significant chart. This is issued at 18 UTC on 28 July 22, based on the 12, 12, 12 Jebra observations and valid up to 18, 29 UTC. Flight level 100 to 450. Actually, there are uh, two levels, sequ sequ weather charts are issued. One is for the medium level, another is for the 
higher level. Medium level is 100 to 250 and 250 to 630. Sometimes it will issue 100 to 430 and 250 to 630. So uh, every six hours, these significant charts are issued. What is this charge? This is a scalpel line. So this is the significant area where this will, whether it will occur. What type of area? This is the isolated embedded CB. This is isolated embedded CB argument. Here isolated, this is the uh, icing and this is the turbulence. Turbulence the location as well as the, uh, the uh, height base and top is given. This is jetty stream. This is another. This is the issue that the 12 UTC on 18 January 2022, based on the six UTC observations, valid up to six UTC on 19th January 2022. This is signal chart for how flight level 100 to 200 to 450. Just see, this is the core of the jet stream. This is the core of the jet stream. This is the core of the jet stream with the speed of 100 to 150. Flight level is 380. And see, see this uh, dotted line. There are two dotted line. One dotted line and two dotted line. One is written here. The one is this Balta dotted line is a moderate cut. This is the flight level 232, 4, 410 flight level, and that is 23,000 feet to 41,000 feet. This is a severe, severe cut, severe uh, clear air turbulence. This is between, between, in between the 262. 380 flight level is from 260 to 380. So this is jet stream of the wind speed of 100 to 150 at flight level 380. And the uh, if you write this, if you explain, if you brief this phenomena, the uh, the clear air turbulence, there is a severe moderate to severe turbulence. The lower level is 230 and higher level is 410. So the moderate to severe turbulence is in between 230 to 410. Sir, there is a lecture at 430. Okay, okay. Yes, I am summarizing. Yes, there is a moderate. You see the another scalpel line. It is in, in between. There is a moderate turbulence. Base is given cross, cross, cross. This means below the flight level of 100. The base is below the flight level of 100, but top is given 200. Okay. Severe icing, icing is in between the 110 to 200. This is the flight level, 110 to 200. Similarly, the another, the moderate turbulence is 100 to 220, and icing is 120 to 220. If you give, the, tell the pilot the severe briefing, they see briefing is as the moderate turbulence uh, in between, up to the, you will find the moderate turbulence up to the flight level. 220. Okay, so below the chart. Below chart means CB, CB base is generally 0 to 5, that is 2500. Okay, 2500 feet. To, to 2200, uh, the CB, CB height is uh, 0 to 5, it is generally it is base is taken as 20, uh, 0 to 5 right level, that is 2500. So this is 20,000 feet. The top is turbulence. Top is 25, uh, 20, uh, 20, feet. Just see, this is the, the in the month of June, the position of the jet stream is north of Italy. Okay, and in the month of May, it is further north, north of India. Okay, so it is shifted. It is shifted. Okay. So as soon as monsoon advances, that this the position of the uh, this this jet stream shift goes to the northern world, northern latitudes. Okay. Then that is that we can say the higher latitudes. This asani the TC the TC AC bulletins are issued based on the uh, tropical cyclone. This is the case of the tropical cyclones. The tropical cyclone is also. Included in the sea weather charts. Sir, we need to conclude, sir. So, apart from the aviation met uh, services, uh, the air aviation uh, telecommunication network is also important. Whatever we observe, whatever we forecast, we need to communicate to the uh, 
uh, internal as well as the out, uh, outward. This the, the India has the four um, automatic message, message switching systems at the Chennai, Bombay, Delhi, Calcutta, Nagpur, and Guwahati. Automatic switching system, six, six stations. These are having the capability of producing the automatic plotted chart, grip and buffer reporter, fast compilation and communication of their message, aeronautical messages. Offbed data and WFC products received through the satellite SEDIS installations are being sent to the AMSS. Use of MW and AMOS. Uh, Suresh Ram sir, may I request you to kindly conclude, sir, as we have already taken our time. The next faculty is already arrived. Okay. So uh, the question answer session will be taking after that uh, lecture from Radar Technology. Okay. Uh, sir, may I now request to please conclude your lecture, sir? So one more. What's this slide? Only these slides. The uh, telecommunication channels of the AI has also been used for exchange of the aviation messages. IMD has its own communication channels for collecting and exchange of the MID data within the country and on the global telecommunication systems. The data of the surface observatory, AWS, RSRW, satellite imagery, DWR products are being utilized to issue the aviation forecast. Apart from this, the NW charts and other model output are also considered. To issue the aviation forecast. Next, nothing is left. This is the instrument. Okay. So, thanks. Any questions? Uh, I thank Dr. Suresh Ram for an uh, excellent uh, informative lecture. And uh, if any audience is having any questions, they may put in the chat box. We will address the questions uh, after. Uh, uh, Dr. Kannan's lecture. Uh, so, uh, audience uh, may put their questions in chat box or they may write uh, to email uh, to Dr. Suresh Ram or uh, our MCI website. We will collectively.